known him very long, but he uh, he's going to come do something for us with a, a resurrection thing. He's going to be able to tell you guys a story because he was actually there when everything happened. Let's introduce you to our shepherd, Mr. Jedediah.
Jesus came to give us peace. And so the donkey starts this, this miraculous, terrific, but yet horrible week in the life of Christ. And so there's my donkey. Well, that day everybody loved Jesus. They were yelling Hosanna, and they were just so proud of Jesus. But then things begin to change. They begin to realize he wasn't going to get rid of the Roman army. He wasn't going to set up a throne here on earth. And some didn't like that. And so he lost popularity. And one guy that he traveled with, he had, he had this one guy. He had 12 guys. But he had this one guy who was named Judas. Does anybody know what Judas did to Jesus? What did he do? For 30 pieces of silver. Sold him out. After all the things he'd seen Jesus do. After all the time that he'd spent with him. And all the, the love that, that he could see that was in Jesus. He got greedy for money. He sold him out. Hard to understand a man like Judas. So what do you think is in my pink egg? What do you think? Well, my egg was too small to get 30 pieces of silver. But I do have three just to remind me about the sell. I made up my mind that I'm not going to sell Jesus out. Just not going to do it. Not for 30 pieces of silver, not for any amount of money, because he means too much to me. He's my Savior. And so Judas sold him out. He told the Roman ruler, he said, you'll know who Jesus is, he said, because I'm going to go identify him. I'm going to give him a big old kiss, and you'll know that's the one that you're after. And so they went to the garden to arrest him. But of course, something else happened before then. Jesus knew that his time was at hand. He knew that why he was born, he was born to die. He knew that day was coming. And so he gathered his 12 disciples, and they met in this upper room. And it was the time of Passover. I think you guys you said we talked about Passover last week. And they always sacrificed the lamb at Passover and they ate a special meal. Well, that's what Jesus was doing with his disciples. And they didn't know that Jesus was going to be the lamb and all the sacrifices of lambs. Because he was the lamb of God and he was going to give his life for the sins of the world. And so they sat down and the Bible says that he took two things and gave to his disciples. One of the things was bread. He broke bread and told them, he said, take, eat, this is my body. Because Jesus set an example with his life. Do you know he never sinned? Out of all the things he was tempted to do and all the bad things he could have done, he always said no to sin. Because he knew he had to be sinless to die on the cross for us. The other thing he did is he took a what? Gave him bread. What else did he give him? No, what did he give them? They're sitting at a table. It was Jesus and all of his disciples. He broke the bread and said, take eat, this is my body. And then he took something else and gave them something to eat. A cup. Okay, well it wasn't really his blood, but it was symbolic of his blood. It was probably the, the grape juice or the unfermented wine. And he said, this cup is the New Testament of my blood. He said, if you drink that, that you're doing that in remembrance of him. And we still, you guys still do that, don't you? Have communion. Did it last Sunday morning. And so the cup. So I'm going to leave you at the table. I'm going to leave you right there with his, he's with his disciples. They're eating the Passover meal. And then, of course, then some really terrible things begin to happen real close after that. Can I come back next week and finish? I would love to stay, but I cannot. Do you guys mind if he comes back next Sunday and finishes the book with an extra eight? Yeah. Do three to nine. Three. Test and two. I can do that. Three. Do the next, next three. Next three. Well, thank you for listening to me. And thank you, Craig, for letting me come. Did you guys enjoy that? I thought it would be better. Jim and I, welcome back to Super Sunday.
Well, my problem is that my mind is not as sharp as it used to be. So, sometimes I need help remembering things. But I do remember that we had done three eggs? Three eggs? Three eggs, let's see. Does anybody remember what was in the first egg? What was in the first egg? A donkey. Why a donkey? What did a donkey represent in the Easter story? George? What? Peace, okay. And does anybody remember what happened that day? We just real quick, real quick, so we got three more to do. Anybody remember? Remember Jesus came riding in on the donkey. And uh, you remember? What was the story? Okay, my hearing is not that good. Speak real loud. Okay, what were the people doing when Jesus came in? Do anybody remember? What were they doing? And he prayed. 
and he prayed that the Lord would help him die. Help him go to the cross. And finally, he utters some very famous words in Scripture. He says, nevertheless, Lord, he said, if it be possible, you know, I don't want to have to die. But then he says this. He says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And that's what we all have to do, is let God have his way. So he went into the garden to pray. After a while, or say, let me say, while he was in the garden, remember the guy that sold him out? What was his name? Judas comes with a band of soldiers and the soldiers come to arrest Jesus and they take him through the mockery of a trial. Does anybody have any idea what's in this dream? Something happens before he gets to the cross. Something terrible and horrible. Something that I personally cannot stand to watch because I knew him I mean, I never got to spend a lot of time with him, but I watched him, and he healed people. He opened blinded eyes. He caused lame people to walk. I even heard him raising the dead. And yet, they did something very, very horrible to him. Does anybody know what it might have been? No, this is before that. Dying's hard enough, but they just didn't take Jesus immediately to the cross. They took him through the mockery of a trial. In fact, they couldn't even get anybody to really give them hard evidence to, to kill him. But they decided to do something to him that they did to all prisoners. Does anybody know what it was? They whipped him. And so there's a little piece of leather in here. And it represents the whip. And the Bible says they hit him on his back 39 times. 39 times. Can you imagine somebody? And this whip was special. I think it's 40 was tortured. 40, they were under Roman law. You couldn't hit somebody 40 times. So they hit him the maximum. And this whip was not like an ordinary whip. This whip had pieces of glass and metal in the end of it. So when it hit, it would cut into your skin and then rip chunks of it out. Horrible, horrible. A lot of blood loss. It would make you so, so hard to, to move and and so weak from blood loss. And yet they did that to Jesus. And then they did one more thing. They made something for him to wear. Does anybody have any idea what it might be? Girl on the end over there. Say it real loud because I got music in my ear. Hit. A crown of thorns. That is so, so true. And you know why they made a crown of thorns? They really were almost, they were right, but they were wrong in the way they did things. They put a crown on him. What kind of a person wears a crown? A king. And how many of you know he was a king? They were mocking him, though. They said, we don't have any king but Caesar. That's why they wanted to kill him and crucify him. And so they planted a, a, cr a crown, but they made it of thorns, so they could press it into his long thorns that actually would, would, would infect and irritate. And they crushed them down into his forehead to where blood would run down and get in his eyes. It was a terrible sight. And they mocked him and made fun of him. <coughs> Little did they know he is the king. And he's not just a king. He is the king. He is the king of all the other kings. And he's the Lord of all the other lords. So what's in the first? What's in the second? What's in the third? What's in the fourth? Praying hands. What's in the fifth? And what's in the sixth? A crown. A crown. Well, the story gets better. As bad as it seems, as bad as it sounds, as horrible as it was, this story has a really happy ending. Well, that's all I got time for, Brother Craig. So I will see you. Can I come back next week? Come back next Sunday? I mean, I need two more weeks. Two more weeks, you got them. <laughs>
We did six days. We got six to do, so we got to hurry. Okay, does anybody remember what's in the first day? Donkey. Donkey, because Jesus came representing peace. Does anybody remember what was in the second day? The coins. Because who sold him out? Judas. Oh, what a terrible thing to do. But it's in the third day. The purple day. The cup. Because he had his last meal with his disciples. And he told them, this do it in remembrance of me. So we call it communion. And so every time we do that, we remember that the blood, or the wine represented his blood, and the, uh, uh, the bread was his body. Okay, does anybody remember what was in the word, James? Praying hands, because when they got done eating, he took them to the garden to pray with him, but they kept falling asleep. But he prayed, finally he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Does anybody remember what was in the green egg? It starts getting, this is where it starts getting bad. The whip. And they beat him on the back with a cat of nine tails, had glass and, 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 and metal in the ends of it that would rip your bone, the flesh off your bones. Terrible thing to do to a person. And then we finished up with this. The crown. And so they mocked him and said, you're not a king, but he was the king. He's the king of all the kings. So now we got to finish up here tonight. We're going to start with the yellow egg. Does anybody know what's in the yellow egg? Anybody remember? No. It was something that put him on the cross. Nails. Nails. And this is a cross made out of nails. Crucifixion was horrible. Not only was it humiliating, but it was so, so painful. They would take and they would drive a 3 8 inch by 7 inch long nail right through this part of your wrist. And they made sure it hit a nerve that would send pain through the whole body. And they did that to each wrist. Then they took his feet and they crossed them over and they drove it through the tops of his ankles down into the cross to hold him there. Because it was all designed to issue a lot of pain and suffering. Because it was the worst thing that could, could be done to a person to execute them. Does anybody remember then what is in the light blue? Because while he was hanging on the cross, the guards did something about his garments. You no? Know? What is it? A dice. Because the Romans that did the execution, the soldiers... Part of their pay was they got to take the stuff off the prisoners and keep it. And Jesus had a garment on that was made in one piece and it had no, no seams or anything on it. It was a, a real beautiful garment. And so they didn't know what to do, so they decided they would gamble for it. And whoever got their magic number would get to keep the garment. And so that was the dice. So when Jesus died, he had nothing of this world. This world didn't mean anything to Jesus. And he left everything behind. In fact, when they finally buried him, it's not even his tomb. It was a borrowed tomb. But how many of you know he wasn't going to keep it anyway? Because he had no attachments down here. Does anybody know what's in the purple one? They crucified him. It took Jesus six hours to die. When they went and checked the two thieves, they had not died yet. So they did something to them. Does anybody know what they did to the thieves to make them not go with Anybody? They broke their legs. They took this giant mallet of a hammer and would hit them in their knees and crack their legs so that they couldn't arch their back and breathe. So that they would suffocate in their own body fluids. Their lungs would fill up faster and they would drown in their own fluids and blood. But when they went to do that to Jesus... It had been prophesied that he had no broken bones. Because the Passover lamb couldn't have any blemishes. It couldn't have any broken bones. And since Jesus was the lamb of God and all those sacrifices, he couldn't have any broken bones. And they found out he'd already died. But the Roman soldier wanted to make sure he was dead. So does anybody know what he did to him? He did what? He threw a spear. It's a little one here, but it was a big one that day. 
They stuck it all the way to his side, and the Bible says that blood and water came forth, representing that his lungs had already filled up with these fluids, and Jesus was dead. Well, now that he's dead, they take him off the cross, and they're going to put him in a borrowed tomb. But they have to do something to the body, and the ladies that loved him, Mary Magdalene and some other ladies, they prepared his body for burial. Does anybody know what's in this cream colored egg? What? Right, it's a, it's a linen cloth because they wrapped his body, which was their custom. They would wrap the head and they would wrap his body in linen. And usually they would put spices and stuff in there so that it would smell better because he was already dead and the body was decayed. And so they would wrap the body in spices. But they didn't have time to do the spices. But they did have time to wrap his body in the linen. So then, he's in the tomb. And Herod and them were worried. And so they decide they need to do something to make sure that the disciples don't steal his body. Because Jesus has said that if they killed him in three days, he'd rise again. And they said, there's no way a dead man can rise again. But his disciples may come and steal him and tell everybody he rose from the dead. So they put some guards out there. And then they did something to the tomb. Does anybody know what's in this egg? What? 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 No? What's here? Lady? A rock. A giant one. Right there. Rolled it over so big that it would take a lot of people to move it. One person couldn't move it. Two people probably couldn't move it. But then they posted guards on the outside to make sure nobody moved it. And so they put a rock in front of the tomb. So Jesus is dead. He's been buried. They put a big stone in front of the tomb. They've got guards outside to make sure that nobody comes and steals the body. And so that was Friday. And then Saturday goes, day number two. And then the third day was Sunday, which is the first day of the week, if you ever look at the calendar. And so what do you think is in the yellow egg on Sunday? Anybody know? What? No? What is it? Yell it out. Nothing. Nothing. Why? Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive. Aren't you glad he's alive? I tell you what, from that day till this day, the world has never, ever been the same. Every other religion serves a Bahamut or a Buddha or whoever. And you know what? They've all got a tomb somewhere where they died and are buried. And if you dug it up, you know what? They'd still be there. But we have the only God, the real God, the true God. Yes. That Jesus is alive. Here's the part I love the most. Because he lives, we're going to live also. And so that's what the AIDS are all about. Where's Brother Craig? Thank you, Brother Craig, for allowing me to be here.